Welcome to Creating Connection with me, your host, Dr. T, where we will navigate being human together. We'll do this through conversations, exploring the challenges and joys of life, uncovering insights and strategies to create meaningful connections, to foster personal growth and find solace in the collective wisdom of our diverse community. Drawing from a unique blend of academic expertise and personal experiences, I will dive into the joys and complexities of aging, death, dying, grief, and body image with a blend of humor, and compassion and understanding, we will forge connections that transcend geographical boundaries and unite us in our shared humanity. When we come together, the possibilities are endless. Creating connection with me, Dr. T, starts now. Hello, everyone. I'm your host, Dr. T, and you're listening to Creating Connection on Transformation Talk Radio. Stay with me for the next hour as I talk with Julie Page about strength, strategy, and resilience. Welcome, Julie. I'm going to read your bio and then we'll jump in. Uh, Julie Page is the CEO of Impact Coaching Solutions, LLC. She's been coaching for over 20 years in the wellness and fitness industry, focusing on personal growth and forward movement. In the last six years, she's been coaching and training in the business world, collaborating with business owners and teams to build better communication and leadership skills. This results in happier teams, work environments, and leads to increased profit profitability. Her passion is for equipping and empowering individuals to discover, maximize, and lead with their strengths while offering advanced strategies to achieve higher performance levels. This results in a long-lasting transformation in lives and organizations. As a two-time successful business owner, best-selling author, and experienced in business management, she understands the importance of strategic planning, clear communication, and team collaboration for achieving bottom-line results. Julie knows firsthand how important leadership is in the world. As a Maxwell Leadership Executive Program Leader, she can bring powerful programs, resource, resources, and workshops to you and your team to elevate how people lead themselves, their projects, and their teams. Julie, welcome. I am so excited to have this conversation. We began it, you know, weeks ago when we met at the Women's Business Bridge and have continued it um, ongoing, and I look forward to diving in with you on all of these topics. So tell me. Thank you uh, so much, uh, <laughs> Teresa. It's a pleasure to be here. What an honor. Yeah. yeah. And, and all of your, you know, like in your bio, I'm like, yep, communication. Yep. Strengths. And so when you're working with someone, I'm just going to dive right in. When you're working okay. with someone, how do you emphasize that area of strengths and, you know, bringing that aspect of resiliency into leadership? Mm-hmm. Just light well, stuff. <laughs> yeah. So I, I have one tool that I use, Teresa, that is kind of the foundation or springboard that we can okay. kind of jump off of. It's called the Maxwell Method of DISC. So many people out there might be quite familiar with DISC okay. as a personality assessment. It kind of is in that same category as Strengths Finder. There's Enneagram. There's Myers-Briggs, mm. all sorts of um, different assessments out there. The thing that I love about the Maxwell method is because John C. Maxwell is very um, focused on leadership, communication, and strengths. So then when you receive that report back from the assessment, it's very focused on those three areas. That's so true. it's a great way to kind of start with someone when I'm either coaching them or doing a workshop to talk about your communication styles, how do you adapt, how do you understand other people are different than you, right? There's so many misunderstandings and drama in the workplace today. And um, and then how do we focus on strengths? Yeah. How do we capitalize on the strengths of our team members rather than us doing something in our weak area? Then we're not going to be as powerful. So understanding different people have different strengths and then how can we come together as a team to yeah. optimize that. And I can see how that would be transformational and long lasting versus, you know, I, I know that I've, I've been trained in different areas over the years. And, and most recently, um, there was something about colors and I loved it, mm -hmm. but, but listen to me say it was something about colors. And I know that, <laughs> you know, I was in a room with, you know, 
I, I was like the standalone extrovert, mm -hmm. but I was also being trained with some accountants and, you know, some management type. So it was really interesting, but it didn't tell me then how to take those strengths into my daily life. It gave me insight on, you know, mm -hmm. working with colleagues. Like I had a, a colleague who, you know, we, she was a certain color and I just, in my enthusiasm would just go into her office and plop down and be like, oh, blah, 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 blah. and then I realized when I read her profile, um, that she like that was jarring i mean but it, mm. like the 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 assessment said that and of course she as my dear friend was like oh no no it's fine and i thought it is fine but it's interesting to know so mm -hmm. how are people so so they take the test or they take the you know the assessment and then how do you work with people how do you then you know bring this into reality so it is making that transformational difference that's a great question because there are people, so in the coaching realm, Teresa, mm -hmm. in executive coaching, of course, it's long-term. Yeah. So there's time. So when we think about, and I'm sure you've experienced this too, whenever we want to make a new habit in our life, we don't just hear a great speaker or decide one day, okay, I'm going to exercise every day and we've never yeah. exercised, for example. It's not going to just happen, right? Yes. It takes time to make that change. And that's one of the issues with, I really like to, when I go into businesses and work with teams, to have that long lasting relationship, because mm. to come in and do a workshop, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. You learn a lot, right? Yeah. But if you don't have that follow-up, that consistency to actually make those changes in how you communicate, how you lead, how yeah. you focus on strengths, then we're human we bounce back to our default, what's comfortable, right? Yes. And so um, there are different things I have built into my program, mm -hmm. but I will tell you the businesses that I've worked with who continue that there's a lot more growth and a lot more sustainability and change. And they're really enjoying that. So it's very important, whether yeah. you do it in an organization to do it that way or individually with business owners or um, people, leaders which can yeah. be leaders can be a mom. Guess what? Moms are leading. Yeah. Right? <laughs> we are all leading in some we way. Are. I, yes. I believe that as well. Yeah. I like that. I like that you like put the point on that because sometimes when people are listening, they're like, well, I don't manage people or, mm -hmm. you know, I just do this. And it's like, no, we're all leading in our lives in some way. And that could be at work. I, I believe that in all of the levels that I had done in corporate, whether it was executive assistant or HR rep, mm -hmm. that I had, you know, a leadership role, even within that, you know, and in, in helping to support people. Um, so I like this point of like the long term, because yeah, I, I do remember as an HR rep, we'd bring people in and it would be like super exciting for the managers. And then we would think that it would like trickle down to their teams. And of course it was, you know, it was exciting for a week or maybe it'd come up in it, you know, intermittently of like, oh yeah, you know, this, I'm a, this type. Um, but to actually take that in and, and yeah. make sustainable shifts in communication. So do you have, um, is there a story or something that, that pops out in as like a, like a success story or, or a, how you followed a corporation or a leader to, um, make real changes? Well, yes. So let me think here. I would say um, I've got a couple of people that I'm doing coaching with right now mm. who have come a long ways. So for example, one person who was very successful in business, but just kind of stuck in some areas, right? Mm -hmm. As we all can be. And so just working on those areas, working through, whether that's through strengths, we talk about communication, we talk, we, we do some role playing. I've started doing that nice. in coaching. And I will just say, Teresa, nobody likes role playing, <laughs> but they're like, really, you're going to role play now and including me. Mm -hmm. But I have to say the power of that. I've been using yeah. that with different clients of just it helps us to practice and to think through, you know, when we're going to have a hard conversation, let's say, or something putting ourselves out there. And it's just been fun to watch clients kind of push through and break through barriers yeah. that they've had for years and yes. come out the other side. It's super duper thrilling. Oh, so, I, I... 
And I do want to say when we were talking about leadership, so one of my favorite quotes, and maybe this will help our listeners, John Maxwell talks about leadership is an influence, Mm. nothing more, nothing less. So if you think about that, who are you influencing today? And if you're influencing someone, which all of us are, Mm -hmm. we are a leader. Oh, I like that. Mm. I like that. And it's an interesting way to think about, you know, even as you're saying that, I'm like, well, who am I influencing? I'm like, well, certainly my dogs today. No, oh. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but there's this, there's this, you know, it's, it's almost for me, I will say this, that there's, there's um, a strength in that word that almost feels like hard to step into. Right. So it's like, well, I don't know, am I really? Um, but, but yes, I am in, in yeah. different ways. And so I, I can, I love that. And I, so I want people to actually think about who are you influencing mm -hmm. and, you know, in what areas of your life and, and maybe just step into that role and say like, okay, I, I am, because this is, you know, as it's nothing more, nothing less, because we tend to put different people on pedestals or different mm -hmm. areas, or maybe people put themselves on their own pedestals, which can be its own uh, communication barrier. Um, just, you know, as a, you know, <laughs> call back to academia. Um, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, I worked with some great people, um, yeah. but there's some that pop into mind as, you know, thinking of leadership or their title is more important mm -hmm. than their humanity. So how are you working? Like if, so, you know, if, you you talk about resilience with leadership and i'd mm -hmm. really like to dig into that a little bit of like what do you mean by resilience how do you encourage it how do you help people mm -hmm. to become resilient especially as you said in these times are you know it is it is wild times um you know mm -hmm. with you know jobs and the job market and you know yeah. are you working at home or are you not working at home so when you talk about resilience what are you what are you referring to yeah that's a big question. So resiliency for me is the ability to bounce back. Mm -hmm. So we're all going to have disappointments. Every single day, there's a disappointment in life. That's inevitable. Mm -hmm. But discouragement, that's our choice. Are we going to mm -hmm. let those disappointments discourage us and kind of spiral down, right? Okay. Or are we going to work through those disappointments, bounce back, resiliency, right? Okay. And resiliency really is, for me, a mindset that's okay. pretty much at the core, because if you think about Teresa, we have to have that mental resilience first. And in our life today, I mean, especially since COVID, mm -hmm. I, I hate that we always kind of say, oh, everything changed, but it did change, right? Mm -hmm. And um, we just, we, we need to have that mental resiliency. And so for me, some areas where I talk about that. So, for example, have you heard victim versus victor mindset? Oh, no. I, I mean, I, I think okay. I, I would love for you to tease that out for us. Sure. So so that's one of the ways that I talk about it. So if you think about a line, so <laughs> a victor mindset, you're going to be above the line. So okay. you're going to take accountability, take ownership for your actions. Now, if you are a victim you're below mm -hmm. the line, you blame, make excuses, okay. right? And don't, and don't take accountability. So when I talk to people about that, some people live below the line all the time. And that, okay. and that's very sad for me. Okay. So how can we break through? But most of us, we can be a victor sometimes, but we fall below the line. Sure. For example, what is your default response, Teresa? When you are walking through the dark and you step on the Legos that your son left out <laughs> or you stub your toe on the chair, what's your first response? Well, um, I am thinking of my dogs, how they lay their toys around. My first oh. response is, why do you always try to kill me? Oh, <laughs> But, um, but yeah, I, so I bring a sense of humor to the startle, um, yeah. because that it, it really is startling, <laughs> it, you know, it can be, it can be mm -hmm. quite dangerous. Um, and, and Legos are no joke. I mean, we don't have kids, <laughs> but we had plenty of littles in our lives that, yeah, mm -hmm. those are, those will send you through the roof. Um, so anyway, so that's, I, I don't yeah. know if that answers your question, but it is, it is humor with uh, a little, it's a little That's great. sharp humor. <laughs> That's great. And a lot of people, 
and myself included, but usually like, you know, you're walking through the dark, you stub your toe. Oh, it's yeah. first it's stupid chair. Uh -huh. Okay. So did the chair jump out and stub your toe? <laughs> no. Or then the next thing would be, why did my spouse leave that chair in the way? Blame oh, yeah. the spouse, right? So it's kind of the default. It's very easy to blame, even mm -hmm. when it's a inanimate object. So, yes. so the point being of, okay, when we do fall below, mm -hmm. how quickly, you know, that resiliency is how quickly can we get back above and live in that victim mindset? Um, I also talk about you've got the growth mindset versus the fixed mm -hmm. mindset. Yeah. So living in that growth mindset, that would also be above the line. Or we also talk about the abundance mindset versus the scarcity mindset. Sure. So there's a lot of different ways you can kind of frame it, mm -hmm. but it's basically when you're living up here, you're, you're taking responsibility for your own actions, your own yeah. choices. Now, there are things that come, disappointments come that we're not in control of, but mm -hmm. then how do we respond yes. to those? That really is the key. So versus the, and I talk about this with mindfulness. So versus the, you know, kind of that knee jerk reaction that you mm -hmm. have, you, you give space to respond. And so when you're thinking about like, if, and, and as you're doing this, um, so if you're just listening, you know, Julie is putting her fingers together, kind of making a straight line. And so is that straight line kind of the area of like, this is the facts. Like, this is like no story, no anything. This is what happened. And because we can have, you know, I like this word disappointments or challenges or mm. things that come up that we don't have control. But what I think is if you can step back and then actually say, you know, this is the fact. This is a fact. Mm -hmm. I applied for this job. I didn't get this job or I applied for this promotion and I didn't get this. Pro That's the facts, like taking any yes. story of it. But when you're talking about like if it's either scarcity or victim or, you know, um, uh, what's the opposite of growth? Fixed, mind fixed, fixed mindset. mindset. You yeah. know, so then someone might say they have it out for me. No one likes the, mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, I suck or whatever, like whatever their story is about it. And so you're taking people and bringing their story above the line so that they could say mm -hmm. like, OK, this is the fact of what happened. Now, how yeah. are you going to respond to it in a way that is supportive for your team, your company, your culture. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love that, Teresa. And a lot of us make up stories. Yeah. So don't make up Many a story, things. stick to the facts, right? Yes. Yes. And sometimes when we've made up a story and we've fallen below the line, I've, mm -hmm. I've had this happen, the whole reframing process, thinking through, okay, I've told myself X, Y, Z about what yeah. happened, but what if A, B, C was actually the story. Yes, yes. And that's been very powerful for me and just, okay, let's reframe this. Mm -hmm. You know, what are you telling yourself and how can you reframe what you're telling yourself? Yeah, because the mind, uh, well, and this is what I like to also say is, um, <clears throat> the mind is is very adaptable and, yeah. and we can influence these things and, I always say that the mind will call BS if it's like so far out of the realm, right? Like, so if I were to say like, I'm an amazing and talented singer, <laughs> you know, like my mind would yeah. be like, no, I mean, it might be an above the line thought, but it's not yeah. a true or accurate thought. So it's yes. also being realistic. And that's where I think the strengths come in, right? Because mm -hmm. we all have strengths. And if I'm looking at you and going like, oh, Julie's strength is this, and I'm trying to be like Julie, but it is not my path, then that's where mm -hmm. I think some of that below the line thinking would happen, right? Because it's like, oh, I'm failing. I can't do this. I can't do this. But if you if you stop and go like, oh, well, that's not even my skill set. Like I can't, and we can't all be good at everything, but I don't think we're used to thinking about things that way, right? Like, I don't mm -hmm. think that we're used to focusing on that because we've kind of had this one set like a leader looks like this and a leader does this mm -hmm. and 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 rather than making it like oh I am in this role and how can I bring my best self into it mm -hmm. and I believe also as women I mean I've never been a man but being <laughs> married to a man mm -hmm. it's like I don't see that as much um but as women we can tend to compare ourselves yeah yeah. And that can be the beginning of a downward spiral, mm -hmm. Teresa, where we fall 
below the line because no matter what, you know, like I can be really happy with my house. And then I look at a house magazine or I go to my girlfriend who, you know, um, actually decorates for every single season. <laughs> I've tried doing that, but I'm like, and then my, my, you know, fall ornaments are still up the next summer. Sure. So it's not me. It's not me. So yeah. as long as I can go there and appreciate, oh, I love coming to your house because I love the decorations, but it's okay that I'm not that way. Yes. Right. So, so yeah. that is, and, but so I love that because I, I just was, I was just out with uh, my sister and a couple of friends and, and had this exact conversation, you know, they love to decorate. And, you know, one of them said that it, they would, if they were having like a dinner party, they would take days to set the table. And wow. I mean, that is like, you know, kind of a circle of uh, hell for me. Um, <laughs> like even think, you know, and I was like, so you enjoy that. And she's like, oh, I love it. And, and I, and, and it's so interesting then to say like, okay, that's not me, which is an acceptance piece, but where, where does acceptance and that, um, not fixed mindset come in because isn't there something of like because I've seen you know mm. uh you know guys that I've worked with um when I worked in engineering there was one person in particular they'd be like well that's just who who they are that's just who he is like there's no way to change him like even if his you know behavior is problematic it's just who he is and and so there's something about acceptance and saying like okay I'm not a decorator and I can enjoy when other people are and I can have this sense of peace but when when is that like fixed my or like do you am yeah. I making any sense you you <laughs> you are and um I have people in my life who have also well that's just who I am better just love me so that's more an excuse okay. in my mind below the line because gotcha. I'm not willing to change or grow, so better just get over it, right? Um, but okay, and now I now I forgot the original question because I was talking. Well, because sorry. we're taught we're also talking about this beautiful acceptance of like oh, who, yes. who I am and who I know myself to be. And 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 then I know for myself I, I get I struggle. Like, is that, mm -hmm. you know, is that not a growth mindset? Because I'm mm -hmm. like, well, I just don't like to decorate. I've tried it. Maybe it's mm -hmm. the I've tried it and it's not for me versus like this is the I don't well, and you know, I did some teaching on growth and fixed mindset. So mm -hmm. I don't remember all the different ones, but one of the key points about it is when we have a growth mindset and we make a mistake. We can own that, we can learn from it, and we can move forward. If you're more in a fixed mindset, it's gotcha. more um, when, when you make a mistake, it's, oh, I'm I'm a failure. Gotcha. If you're in a growth mindset and you make a mistake, oh, that failed. Hmm. How can I do it better next time? Yes. yes. And so it's more that kind of thinking and and you think about that, then you get stuck yeah. because nobody wants to be a failure. So then pretty soon, okay, I'm not going to try anything new. Yeah. Yeah. And then you get stuck. So, so yeah, I think, I think in the decorating, I'm going to give you freedom. It's okay <laughs> that you don't decorate every There's holiday. your permission <laughs> slip. Um, I did, I did have friends in Reno um, who left their Christmas tree up year round. It was like one oh, in the sure. corner, but then they decorate that for the holidays, which yeah. I was like, well, that's brilliant, you know, yeah. and, and, and kind of low, low stakes. This is not a decorating show. This is <laughs> <laughs> so, but, um, but shout out to them because I really liked that um, yeah. idea. So when you, um, if someone is in like that victim state and we're trying to help them come up with a new story or, you know, get that perspective to bring them up because it's not about never going below the line. It's Correct. if it's, if you go below the line, then how quick do you go back above the line so that you are mm -hmm. in that kind of flow versus staying down here? So if someone is really stuck, how, how do you, how do you start to bring them up to that line and above? Mm hmm. So part of that is the asking powerful questions. Okay. So in a coaching partnership, it really is asking the questions that the people start to discover mm. um, and looking at different options. And one of the things I know I talked a little bit about that earlier, just that whole reframing process mm -hmm. can be freeing. Yeah. Because if you're thinking something about a certain situation, 
and you change how you're thinking about it, that can be so freeing because there's yes. different things attached to that story, right? Um, so that's kind of where I start. Okay. And, and I would say um, good success with that, asking powerful questions and working along. And it takes time. It's not like, okay, let's just, you know, coach one time and woohoo. Okay. I'm, and, and life is not <laughs> uh, step one, two, three. Yes. And step yes. one, two, three, what works for me may not work for you. Yeah. So it really is looking at the whole package, but kind of digging deep and figuring out, okay, what is the next step? Okay. So if you're feeling stuck in this particular situation, so let's say you said to me, I really want to be a, a person who decorates every season. Yeah. All right. So then we'd be talking about that. And I'd be Teresa. Okay. So what would be the your next step that you would need to do to move towards being a decorator of your house every season? Um, buy a magazine. Okay. Examples. So then that would be your action step okay. for this week. And then if that's still your goal and we're working towards that, and I know this is not a decorating show again, no, for no, those of you no, just joining like... us, but you know, then we would, we would take it deeper of, okay, you know, and talk about different things. And let's say you didn't buy a magazine. Gotcha. Okay, Teresa. So, so tell me what was the roadblock to buying the magazine? Yeah, I don't and, know. And as you dig deeper, you may find out, well, I really don't want to be the decorator. Yes. I just, I just think I should. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So yes. you kind of uncover, it's kind of layer by layer through the okay. coaching process. So I like to think of it as like an onion mm -hmm. and you peel back one layer at a time gotcha. and you keep growing in that process. And you yeah. think about if you just whoop, chop the onion. Yeah. It's, it's too crying. much. It's too much. <laughs> Everybody's crying, right? You can't move forward. So, so you want to just peel back gently and, and move forward one step at a time. Yeah. Because a lot of these things that might keep people in that, you know, either fixed mindset or victim mindset, you know, was protective at some time, you know, mm -hmm. so it might feel really scary to give up their story about mm -hmm. whatever, because, you know, then it's like, well, now I have to take accountability for my life. I have to take accountability for my role in this situation mm -hmm. versus, you know, it's all someone else's fault. So I think that yeah. is, I think that's really powerful. And, and so when you do this, it sounds like you work one-on-one -on -one and with groups or like, how, how are you doing most of your work? Yeah, it's pretty much half and half right now, okay. I'd say. So I have individuals that I'm working with. And of course, when you work individually, you can go deeper, faster, get further along faster because it's just you and I, right? Right. Um, I also have some small groups and then working with companies, so okay. organizations, right? So it's it's really about the person when they come to me, whether they are a COO of a company or a CEO and want specific things, or if it's like a solopreneur working with them. Okay. And yeah. and it would be interesting because in those work dynamics, I know I've led workshops, you know, in corporations where, you know, we had everyone from a C-suite to someone mm -hmm. who was on the manufacturing floor in our, in our group. And so it really is, you know, there's, there's, you know, power dynamics, there's, you know, oh, I don't want to say this because this person's listening. And, and so that is a fine line to be able to facilitate mm -hmm. a group and to be able to allow people to, you know, confront their challenges um, and have that growth mindset in a mixed mm -hmm. um, environment. So that's, um, that's, yeah. that takes a lot of skill. Um, well, and it comes from, you have to have a foundation of trust. Yes. Yes. And, Within and the that, company or with you and the people or both? Oh, both, I would say. Yeah. Okay. But within the company. So like I just ran a communication workshop and it was interesting talking to the person who was organizing afterwards. I said, I, I don't think there's a trust here because one of the complaints is there's not a lot of sharing. It's mm. kind of, okay, what do you think? Crickets, crickets, right? And it's because they're not together a whole lot. So how can we build that culture of trust, right? Yeah. And so thinking about a bigger organization, so depending on how they're working together, 
you know, C-suite down to the manufacturing floor. I mean, if the person on the manufacturing floor has tried like shared ideas or done different things before and they get squished, mm -hmm. they're not going to open up and share again. Yeah. Right. So what's, what's your culture that you're trying to build in your work right. environment? And there's so much today, Teresa, you know, people coming and going. Mm -hmm. I mean, even when I was working in, I worked in eye clinic and dental clinics, it was like a revolving door. Yeah. I was like, yeah. wow, you know, so building that, how can you build that team loyalty again, team engagement, right. investing in your team? What does that look like for you? Because that's, that's super important. That's a great question. I was just talking to someone who they work remotely, but like quarterly or whatever, they, they all have to, I'm doing air quotes, have to go in and do team building. But the team building has to matter because this person was like, yeah, I don't know. We just have to do something like it was almost like it was almost like a like silly game kind of vibe um, mm -hmm. versus something like that's meaningful and really building that trust and build, building mm -hmm. that connection and community. Because, you know, as, as we know, that's invaluable, but it does take some facilitation versus more mm -hmm. than just an icebreaker or, yes. you know, something like that, because I know, um, you know, I love a good icebreaker, but not everyone does, you know, they, <laughs> like they, they, you know, either think it's silly or they don't want to yeah. answer, you know, and, and so, um, I think that that's that building that trust and taking a look. So when you said to that person, I don't know, like what's the culture, what's the trust, were they, were they able to see that or is that, and go like, okay, how do we do that step? They, they were, so okay. they saw it. So we have a little plan. So nice. when you, so when you think about um, behavior mm -hmm. and communication, so in the DISC style, and I know not everybody knows what DISC stands for, but basically you have, um, oh, the majority. So let's say around 80% ish, because I'm not good at math on the fly, but um, you have a 69 plus 17% of the people are a little more reserved. Okay. So you think about there's less people outgoing. So if you're standing up front facilitating a workshop and you're like, okay, so here's the questions. What do you think? Nobody's going to say anything. Right. So one of the things I've just started using that worked really well um, is it's called, well, I'm just going to call it a one, two, four. Okay. So what it is, is you have some powerful questions. So really important, Teresa, when we do activities, like you, activities are fun, right? Yeah. But if you have no point to them, like mm -hmm. what did you mm -hmm. learn from the activity and doing the debrief, talking about it with okay. powerful questions, then what was the point? Kind of like what you were saying, right? Okay. So That's the a one, key step. Yeah. Yeah. So the one, two, four is you have a question. So you answer that question. So in this, we were talking about strengths. Okay. Identify your top two strengths and how do they show up at work? So mm -hmm. everybody quietly writing down, right? Okay, now turn to the person next to you and share your top two strengths and how they show up at work. Gotcha. So then you could start to hear the atmosphere change, right? People are sharing. And then depending on the size of the group, then you have two pairs turn and face one another and share in a group of four. Okay. Then when you come to the bigger group, there may be some people willing to share because now you've created that space of safety yeah. and trust because to just call it out. Okay. Anybody want to share like, yeah, yeah. Crickets, no, you know, yeah. and, and I have to remember that because my personality is like, Oh, I'll share. Right. right. And so, <laughs> and I'm like, not everybody's like you, Julie. So, yes. um, so I found that incorporating that in my workshops has been very helpful. Yeah, that's and, an important piece, yeah. like to have the dyads, the the two people mm -hmm. together, then it breaks the ice, so to speak, where they, you know, okay, I've said it at least out loud. And what I like, because I, I do something similar in, in my workshops as well, is that it allows people to feel heard too. Yes. Like, even if they don't want to share it publicly, okay, I've shared with you, 
I've said it out loud. And then there's something that starts to ingrain because I too am a hand raiser and, you mm -hmm. know, and I'll, you know, I, I actually, because I went to school as an older person, you know, what I would see the professors and I would be like, oh my God, it would just be crickets. And then I was, I noticed I would get so uncomfortable that I'd just quick raise my hand to just like, <laughs> okay, they've asked a question. Now we're just leaving them hanging. Yeah. And I started because I realized, oh, like, I don't want to just be this person taking up airspace. I mean, I was doing it out of genuine, like, you know, mm -hmm. like wanting to support the professor. Um, and so I would start to count like, I, you know, so anyone listening who, you know, you're, you're the first in line to answer, you know, maybe do a count, like do a beat and go yeah. like, okay, like give someone because introverts too. Um, there's a book called quiet. Have you ever read that book? I have not. Okay. It's about, you know, kind of how our society is set up mm -hmm. mostly for extroverts and, and to actually pause and give that space because they might be like thinking and they might need time. But if someone else is always jumping in, then they're like, okay, then I don't have to. And I think that that's an important thing. I, I would say to my students when I was teaching um, undergraduates, I would just say, I'm a mindfulness and meditation teacher. I am very comfortable with silence. And then I would just, and then people would pipe up and, 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 you know, and, and that would be in the classroom where we weren't doing a lot of dyads, but workshops, certainly I like that breaking the ice dyads. And then for those people who want to share, you know, then coming back to the big group and sharing. And that's, that's really cool. Um, yeah. One thing I wanted to ask you as I was reading and, and, you know, understanding your bio. So you did 20 years of coaching and then you shifted in the last six years to like businesses. So what was that mm -hmm. shift or, you know, like what, how 20 years is a long time to do coaching yeah. a, yeah. Um, and then, and then, you know, the shift from the wellness space into mm -hmm. corporate. Yeah. Are you trying to say that I'm old? <laughs> no, no, I am very, I am so very. I'm just pro. like you're so I, funny. Twenty years I, is a long time. <laughs> I it, it in a in a great way, and I am yeah. very pro aging. Um, so <laughs> what you, I don't Teresa. like is when uh, when people like in descriptions they'll be like, oh, she's a seasoned, and I'm like, well, can you say something other than seasoned? You know, like yeah. experienced or whatever. So, sure. um, but you know, but like you know, so coaching in the health and wellness mm -hmm. space, and, and not that there's a big divide, but it is a little bit of a shift to working with corporate culture. It is. So, you know, I own my own gym. Oh, I started off that. six women in my living room and built it up to a 5,000 square foot facility. It was very successful. Wow. Um, what kind of caused the shift was I had a car accident. Okay. So more chance to practice resiliency. Yeah. Um, and through that, just decided and that and together with I had done a lot of business coaching with action coach and was basically taught you build your business till it's a well oiled machine, then you sell it, mm. then you move on build another one. Oh, interesting. And, um, and that's kind of how I am like I love building. So even though I love the gym, I thought, okay, time, time to sell. So sold the gym. And, um, and I was going to work there. But then I, I just thought, nope, I need to move on to other challenges. So that was where I entered into the clinic realm. And that was basically just a friend of mine. They didn't have a manager, so started there. Okay. Um, and in my four plus years just working, so I worked as a manager okay. at the first clinic. The second clinic, I was like a manager of eight managers. So kind of oh. a director or something, but sure. helping them manage. Um. I did not realize, Teresa. So when I first took my first job, I was asked, okay, well, you know, we have some people that struggle and may be difficult. How will you be with that, Julia? Oh, not a problem. <laughs> you know, um, I had no idea what I was talking about because in the gym industry, I was working with independent contractors. Yeah. My employees just came in to teach one class. Like you're not together in this one little office clinic 24 people all yes. day, every day, five days a week, right? It's yeah. a different atmosphere, Teresa. So oh, absolutely. what I found is there's no way I could come into businesses now if all I had been was a business owner, because I wouldn't have understood 
what it meant to be a manager, what it felt like to be squished in the middle between yeah. the boss and the people, you know, that you're managing. Yes. Um, I just learned so much and I saw so much miscommunication. It was so sad for me. And so that's one of my passions for going in and helping teams okay. with communication and building teams because most of our life is at work. Yeah. And if and if it's not a happy place for us, that's so sad to me. So yeah. how can we communicate better? Right? Yeah. How can that. we understand? How can we understand that when so and so says this, it's not not take it personally. They're just maybe they're more direct in their communication and we mm -hmm. think they're being mean and yes. we make a judgment and then we decide this whole coming back to that story we make yes. a whole story about it and um yeah so so that's a shift i've always been involved in business i will tell you even as a wellness coach i had people on the treadmill we're talking about their wellness goals and we're also talking about their business because yeah. everything is together you can't you can't really separate and say this is the business julie mm -hmm. and this is the personal julie nope what you see is what you get right yes and that i think we you know there is that idea of like okay you know you know leave leave home at home and work at work mm -hmm. but it, i think the more we learn is it's not it's not possible. We're bringing both pieces, mm -hmm. which is, you know, if you're miserable at work, then you're bringing that home. Mm -hmm. My last, um, uh, one of my, one of my corporate jobs that I had, I was so miserable. And, um, and, and at one point, I think it was after they laid me off, which was amazing. Um, but it was, I remember my husband going like, I don't know how much longer we could have taken that, you know, because mm -hmm. I was just bringing home this, this mm -hmm. energy. And, and I didn't even realize until he said that, like the impact. And I was like, oh yeah, oh, like that is the ripple out effect. And, and so um, I, I, I love that. And we do bring every area with us. So going back to as a business owner, you have this challenge of, you know, you have a car accident, it it really changes your life, but it sounds like then you found your next step, your next calling mm -hmm. by having that opportunity to work as a manager. So if anyone's listening and they're in the middle of something, you might not be able to see it, you know, like me for when I was crying every day at this horrible job. Um, and for you having had a car accident, which really rearranged your life. I mean, you know, I'm sure you had physical impact, but also, you know, in real time, you know, your business mm -hmm. and your focus. So when you're in the messy middle, it can be really hard to see that. What would you tell someone who's in the messy middle right now like mm. of their yeah, I think the messy middle for me. So one of the things that I'll just say, Teresa, I am a woman of faith. So my relationship with um, God and the Lord Jesus Christ and the Bible are all very important to me. So that's been part of my journey okay. for just resi resiliency and helping me to get along. Um, friends, mm. what kind of support network do you have? Yeah. You need a support network. When you are walking through the deepest, darkest valley, you need people to walk with you. Otherwise, it's very lonely. So you yeah. need friends who will walk with you, um, be there, just listen, let you cry on their shoulder, not necessarily try to fix it. Mm -hmm. So this is where my spouse is wonderful, but he's a man, so he likes to fix things. Yeah. So we need to have girlfriends too if you're a woman out there. So yeah. Um, and the other thing I would say is, just take it one day at a time. Mm -hmm. Because if you try to look at the whole thing, it's just too overwhelming. And just what is the next thing that you can do to keep moving forward? Yeah. And there might be when I was in the hardest times with my health, it was like, okay, well, I cook supper today. Mm -hmm. Okay, yay, it was a successful day. Yeah. Right? Um, rather than comparing to how it used to be, Yes. Oh, you know, and then we can make a whole story, right? Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's just, what can we be, great, be grateful for today? Yeah. And it might be something <laughs> small. And I tell you what, in my darkest days, when I started on that path with gratitude, if you looked at my gratitude journal, I am thankful for air to breathe. 
<laughs> I am thankful that the, I'm like, Perfect. that's all I could think of. Yes. That's all I could think of, Teresa, truly. So, yes. but then as you start to do gratitude, it starts to roll over and it starts to build and you start to see things and be able to change your thinking. And and the other thing I, I would say is get get help. So mm -hmm. sometimes we need a therapist. You know, sometimes we need a coach. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need both. Yeah. So kind of how I explain to people, if you have a seeping wound that's bleeding and like if I touch you and you're, Whoop! you know, don't yeah. touch me. Okay, there might be some need for therapy there. Yeah. Um, if it's a scar mm. and it's not tender to the touch and you're ready to move forward, that would be more coaching. Gotcha. So oh, if that's, that's helpful to anybody. But yeah, absolutely. And mm -hmm. and um, you know, thank you for sharing because I know that faith is a really important component for many people. Um, in you know, and and I've actually had people comment like, oh, I wish I had faith because then this would make sense. Um, because there's something, you know, that, that mm -hmm. they, even if someone doesn't believe they see that there's a power in, you know, like, oh, thinking that there's a plan. Um, so thank you for sharing that. And I, so I can I say one thing yes, there, Teresa, please, yes. just for people who don't have faith and think, oh, I wish I could have faith because everything I would understand everything and everything would make sense. Not true. <laughs> not true so that is seriously. not where I thought you were gonna go that's awesome <laughs> oh seriously it's it's not true I don't understand everything that's happening but because I trust the Lord and leave it with him I might see some of those things down the path like now gotcha. I can see where I'm at oh this is why I had to walk through this very hard yeah. time at one okay. place right at one employer right um couldn't see that when I was there yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we may not understand everything, but it kind of gives that, I don't know, that overwhelming piece of just knowing, okay, I'm I'm just going to keep moving forward. So yeah. I just want to say that because if someone is coming into faith, oh, good, everything will be roses <laughs> and I will understand. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, it's still that's life. That's purpose. Yeah. And life is still messy, but it does give you a strength that I wouldn't have without my faith. I love that. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and I, I that just that, that was brilliant because I did not think you were going to say that. But I, I think that in any of our approaches, and I like what you said about starting small, mm -hmm. because a gratitude practice, and this is, you know, I I have my own gratitude practice that I do most days. Um, and and sometimes it is, you know, it is mm -hmm. the like the, like pared down to the simplest, like I have running water in my house. And mm -hmm. and you know, and I think that when we try to force, because I, I think there's this idea with gratitude where it's like, oh, I have to be happy all the time, or oh, I have to, mm -hmm. you know, or it's like, oh, I I have to feel grateful about everything that's happening. And it's like, well, no, there's real challenges mm -hmm. and at the same time of a real challenge, there's also this ability to be present, to come into, you know, going like, okay, in this situation, as hard as it is, I have air to breathe and I'm able to breathe air or I have running water or, you know, when, when my husband had his accident and, you know, that's where my mindfulness practice really came in is sitting, mm -hmm. you know, in the ICU with him. And I thought, okay, you know, find my feet on the floor, take mm -hmm. some deep breaths and go like, all right, this, this is hard. And we're in the place where he's getting care. And, you know, and so there's that ability to, to yes. And yourself, like, you know, mm -hmm. so if, if someone's in a dark place, it's like, okay, you know, maybe think of, of, you know, that you can, you can breathe there or, you know, like, mm -hmm. and, and like, and then that it might even make you laugh because there's something yeah. inherent of going like, okay, distill it down or in most cases, most people in this moment are, who are listening are safe, right? So, mm -hmm. you know, that might even be like, okay, I'm, I, I have a car to drive. I'm listening in my car or I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm listening on a walk. So I have the ability to move my body, you know, so there's all different ways of being able to allow yourself to be present with yes. the facts as they are 
and to find some sort of solace so where mm -hmm. you could like move that like inch by inch so that you're not so you are building that resilience muscle because it's it is a practice i mean yeah. so if you're finding yourself in that you know you're identifying with like oh yeah i am in the fixed mindset or the victim mindset mm -hmm. and it's like how, you know it can seem so overwhelming like how do i get to a victor mindset it's like oh okay it's just one step at a time and yeah, you know shifting right. you know and in, in your story and my friend um pat years ago um if you're listening hello she's in australia she's my friend who's in melbourne oh. um and i know oh, that's lived... where my husband is from yes we yes about that before? We, oh, well not so on cool. not on air but yes okay. yeah yeah and so she, but years ago when i was like you know trying to figure out life and everything she she was like, well, let's play the fact game. And, you know, mm. and, and so now that's something, yeah. you know, it's like, okay, what are the facts like distilled down? What, let's mm -hmm. play the fact game. And, and that has really stuck with me and shaped because the facts are really without the story and without the, yeah. the bluster or the blaming or the, this or that it's like, these are the facts. And if you can be with the facts as they are, and mm -hmm. you don't have to, you, 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 you might not like them, Mm -hmm. or they might be neutral or they might be pleasant, but the facts are the facts. And so mm -hmm. allowing for that. Um, yeah, I, I think that's fabulous. Yeah. And I love that. And I love how you said, Teresa, about your husband, that it mm -hmm. was hard. So yeah. you didn't discount. So when we do gratitude, mm -hmm. we don't discount the pain that we have. We don't yes. ignore it. We don't bury it. Like we acknowledge it's hard. Yeah. You know, so it's just learning to process that and to be able to come out the other side. And so I love that because some people, what I found, then they take it, oh, so you just ignore what's happening, yeah. right? Yes. And it's so, almost that bypass, right? It's like, oh, I yeah. want to, um, I would say this to, you know, students, like, let's not, we're not skipping to the good part, right? So we're not, yeah. you know, because I think people want to find meaning and purpose in their suffering. Mm -hmm. And there is a piece of that of like, okay, acknowledging compassion, yeah. reaching out for support to say like, this is hard. And, you know, eventually you, you might get to a point where you're like, okay, this came out of this situation and I'm grateful. Seriously, I, I and I, I will go back to that, that story of working at that company where I cried almost every day. And had they not, I mean, they laid me off. So I was able mm. to go back to school as an adult and finish my undergrad degree and then met the person who, you know, kind of kept bolstering me and mentoring me to get my graduate degree. I, wow. you know, no one would have ever thought that I'd be, mm -hmm. you know, sitting here at this age, you know, and stage of my life going like, okay, yeah, let's start a business. And, and, you know, where yeah. I have a lot of friends who are like, oh, 10 years, I can retire. And I'm like, I never want to retire because I feel <laughs> so too. grateful to be right. Yeah. To be able to do the things that we love and to be mm -hmm. able to support people. So yes, um, wherever we are at in our paths, I think that's an important piece is, mm -hmm. you know, reality check, uh, compassion, non-judgment, yeah. and then, you know, reaching out for support. Cause that can be so hard too, right? Mm -hmm. When you're in the thick of it and yeah, we might all know that we need social support, but asking for help and allowing and receiving mm -hmm. that's next level, man. Yeah, like I'm hard. still, I'm, I'm still working. On that. Yeah. <laughs> I'm still working on that. Um, so as we're, you know, kind of, we're, working towards the end, what would you have? Like, I always like an action item for people, you know, when they, you know, when they're done listening to this, what's an action item you could give to someone if they, wherever they are in their life within your realm of either resiliency, leadership, communication, what's one or two things that they could do simple and easy after they're done listening to us? Mm -hmm. So I would come back to my question of well, when you're thinking about your goals or who the person is you want to be or where mm -hmm. you're moving towards, what is your next step? Mm -hmm. So sometimes it's way too big. Break it down. What can I do this week? Mm -hmm. And then do it daily. Okay. So having something small to change your habit and then doing it daily because consistency compounds. So the more we're consistent, the more it's going to change our life. Okay. So coming back to, you know, my wellness background. So coming mm -hmm. back to, um, if I want to start being healthier. So let's say I just want to start eating five fruits and vegetables today. I'm eating zero right now. Gotcha. 
You're not going to, okay, I'm going to start eating five. No. Nope. Okay. Can you eat one fruit or vegetable gotcha. each day? And maybe you can't even do that each day. Maybe you mm -hmm. have to, okay, for this week, I'm going to do three times. I'm going to do one fruit or vegetable. Right. Then the next week, maybe four times, maybe five. And then you get up to every day and then you increase to two fruits gotcha. and vegetables. Gotcha. So I find the small changes and they work better, Teresa, because now when I'm making small changes, I'm like, oh, woohoo, I'm eating <laughs> one fruit or vegetable every single day. Like you feel good about yourself. Yes. But if you come out the gate with five mm -hmm. and then you eat three each day, how do you feel? Yeah. Poop you feel bad. You mm -hmm. feel like a failure, right? Mm -hmm. So start smaller and then build yourself up. So okay. that's that's what I would say in whatever area you are. So if you're in a deep, dark valley, okay, what's one thing you could do to help lift your mood today? Mm -hmm. It might be writing, starting a gratitude journal, writing one gratitude. Yeah. It might be going for a walk and looking at the beautiful leaves on the trees mm -hmm. for five minutes, maybe. Right, mm -hmm. right. So to do something small and then keep doing that and then that will build. And then before you know it, you'll be like, oh, I used to be this yes. way and now yes. I'm different. Because I really like this, um, that phrase consistency compounds, because I know in my various, you know, realities of, of health and wellness and seeking and all of those things, you know, it's, it's like, it's, it can seem like, well, that's not enough. But it is because once mm -hmm. you put your shoes on, if you've committed to putting your shoes on, chances are you'll walk out the door. Maybe you'll yes. walk to the mailbox and back, or maybe it'll be like, oh, now I'm out. So now it's, you know, 30 mm -hmm. minutes later. So I, I like that as far as a small step. And for people listening, you have an upcoming, tell us about what you have upcoming. You gave a, a generous discount for anyone yeah. listening. It's It'll be in the show notes. Talk to me about what you got coming up. Yeah, so I have a seven week master course starting on Monday, the 21st of October. And um, it's basically looking at how can we choose the meaningful over the urgent. Mm -hmm. And part of that is being very clear on our purpose, okay. our calling, our direction, whatever you want to call it, our vision, mission, being clear on that, but then also looking at, okay, where are there gaps? So like mm -hmm. we can say we want this, but then we're spending our time or money doing this. Okay, so right. what's that gap? How can we close that gap so that we can have more transformation in our life? Oh, so like that's that. a seven week course. It's in a small group. So it's going to be um, some teaching and then okay. small group coaching. Okay. Um, I love that. And so that'll, that'll start. So the links to sign up, if you want to work with Julie, also your website will be there. So if people mm -hmm. want to find you for that one-on-one -on -one work, that, that will be great. And I do want to mention to people that I have an upcoming workshop as well, and it is mindful aging, um, mm -hmm. shifting the narrative. And so that will be three weeks. We'll meet. I did a, um, pilot study, um, or pilot study. I did a pilot program this summer and it was really well received. And so it's really looking at, you know, how, how do we talk about aging? Where do we have internalized, you know, age bias maybe? And then how can we use mindfulness and awareness, you know, kind of the fact game to, you know, meet because there, there are inherent challenges that can come along with aging or at any stage of our life that are out of our control. So it's bringing mindfulness to that. And uh, listeners, um, if you use the code CC with Dr. T at checkout, um, I'll give 20% off for listeners using that. So this is um, this is upcoming. And then people can find me on my website, ccwithdrt.com. And what is your website? Do you want to say it? My website is impact coach, the number four and the letter U. So impact coach for you.com. I love that. That's great. And thank you so much, Julie, for being here. I just feel like we could talk for hours and I well, thank you, am Teresa. really grateful for your time today. 
And for everyone listening, thank you all so much for tuning in to Creating Connection with Dr. T. I'm grateful you chose to spend this time with us today. Reach out with any questions, comments, or show ideas. And thank you so much for sharing my show. Join me on the first and third Wednesdays of every month at 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 Central, 10 Pacific, 10 a.m. Pacific. And until then, take good care of yourself and others. And we'll see you back here on October 16th with Dr. Douglas Share. Thank you for listening to Creating Connection with me, Dr. T. You can join me by tuning in on the first and third Wednesdays every month at 10 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com, where we will navigate being human together. Being human means that we all have a body and we will all experience loss, grief, and aging if we're lucky. Let's join together on this journey of exploration, support, and mutual learning. I love bringing people together and on Creating Connection, we are a conversation away from understanding another person and quite frankly, ourselves. For more information, visit ccwithdrt.com.